We now look at some examples of determinants. Now recall that actually the determinant of a matrix A is the sum over all patterns of the sign of the pattern times the element uh, elements from the matrix A specified by P, the pattern P. So this is denoted the product of P. It relates to A. So consider the following example. The first example of a 3x3 three three matrix. We see here that actually A in the third column there's only one element non-zero. In the last row there's only one element non-zero. So in order to have a pattern that contributes, then we should pick the 1 and the 3, which means that actually we should also pick the 2 from the second row. Since we cannot pick elements, two elements from a row or a column. So we have identified a unique pattern with a non-zero product. And the product of this pattern is 1 times 2 times 3 equals 6. And the sign, well the sign depends on the number of inversions prescribed by this P. And the number of inversions is the number of elements that are misplaced in the sense that there is something right on the right and above the element. So we have this two times, so the determinant is now 6. In the second example, again, we have a unique non-zero product. First, we see that the 4 here is the only non-zero element on this row. The 3 here is the only non-zero element on the second column. Now, since we've picked two things, then the only remaining things that is non-zero from the first row is the 6. So if we have chosen something from the first three columns, so what, what we, remains in the last row is only the non-zero one. And then there's not much we can choose now in row three. It should be the element, the fourth element two. So here we have one inversion, so the sign of the determinant will be negative, and the product we find here is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 6. So the product is 144. One hundred and forty-four. while the sign of this P is minus 1 to the power, the number of inversions is 1, so the sign is negative. So the determinant of A equals minus 144. The following example we look at a block matrix where M is partitioned in, uh, in four parts and A and C are square matrices. So if these are square matrices then we can determine the determinant of A and the determinant of C. So Determinant of A is summing over all patterns for A and the sign of these patterns uh, times the product of the pattern. Times the sign of PC, which is no more than saying that this is a pattern for the matrix C. Times the product for PC. So actually, these are the only ones that are non-zero patterns possibly for the matrix M. So we now take the sum out, the sum of PAPC, and we write the total product, the sign of PA, product of PA, sign PC, product of PC. Yeah, as we've indicated, 
if we if we would have have chosen something from from b this would have led us choosing something from the zero part and the left lower part of the matrix so these patterns do not contribute to the determinant of m so p a p c defines actually a, a, a pattern for m so actually what is written here on the second line equals the sum of the patterns on m the sine of p and the product of p m so this equals the determinant of m so actually if we have a block matrix in in this sense then uh, the determinant of m is simply the determinant of a times the determinant of c example number four if we have a square matrix and we transpose a matrix so the columns become rows and vice versa then the determinant is simply the same as the original matrix so if we consider the following matrix a and some pattern and this pattern if we would just transpose the pattern then yeah we're actually doing something in the matrix a transposed and p defines pt a pattern for this transposed matrix at and we also have well by by swapping rows and columns we just pick the same elements from at as we had for a so the product of p is the same as the product of pt notice furthermore that the sign of p is the sign of pt since any inversion will still be an inversion if we swap rows and columns so that now by summing over p and calculating the sign of p and the product of p with respect to the matrix a this is the same as summing over all pt patterns for at with the sign of pt times the product of pt with respect to the transposed matrix a so now we have the left hand side equal to the determinant of a and the right hand side equals the determinant of the transposed matrix a so we're done as a final example we discussed the determinant of an upper triangular matrix so here's an upper triangular matrix so all elements below the main diagonal of the matrix a are zero but this means that there's only one pattern that can have a non-zero value and this pattern is given by pi equal, equals i so p1 is 1 and p2 is 2 etc and pn is n so the determinant of the matrix a yeah, so pi is i so the determinant of this matrix a is determined by the sign of this pattern which is actually the identity pattern times the product of the elements chosen by p so this is minus 1 to the power 0 since there are no inversions uh, a11 times a22 times etc a and n so this is simply the product of the diagonal elements so any upper triangular matrix or lower triangular matrix that's, that's something we can conclude as well has as determinant the product of the diagonal elements.